So, a lot of people like to talk about this quote-unquote special relationship we have with the US. However, if you know history at all, then you know the this special relationship is really all smiles and, well, handshakes, photo opportunities, and that's about it. The USA, especially during the early part of the 20th century, went out of its way to try and, you know, do over the United Kingdom as fast as possible. Remember, the Suez Crisis, even though they were meant to be our closest ally, the US decided that it would, um, almost, you know, pretty much go to war against us in that scenario. So, this whole thing of, um, that the US is our, you know, number one closest ally, if you look back at history, not has been the case in some parts of it, but other parts not really. And in recent history, the relationship between us and America has been very much one-sided, uh, favouring them. So this idea of this is completely wrong. And we have Bonnie Greer here with a really good piece uh, in the European. Britain is making a powerful foe of the US. By picking a fight with Ireland, the UK might turn one of its closest allies against it. So, my primary school in Chicago, long ago, was, pre was predominantly African American and Latino. But every March 17th, we became something else, Irish. Each St. Patrick's Day, we wore the green hats or shoes. The boys uh, had, a bow, had bow ties and we girls had ribbons or even a green skirt. We sang uh, when Irish eyes are smiling and we added an O at the start of our names. This was all done without irony and with a great deal of excitement and even affection. Then came, then came the St. Patrick's Day Parade. A cornucopia of Irishness, both real and imagined. The Chicago River was dyed green, and the bands played the massive downtown area that was shut down as we stood on a slid on waving, uh, waving our little Irish flags. Once we watched a Disney movie called Darby O'Grail and the Little People, featuring a then little unknown Sean Connery as, as a Dubliner. And I'm sure that he had... Uh, the, <coughs> I'm sure that he had a non-existent and Irish accent as he did playing the cop who befriends Kevin, Co uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin Costner's Elliot Ness and then gets murdered in uh, Brian De Palma's 1987 film The Untouchables. It took me a few years to know that the power that the Irish held over Chicago. They ran the Democratic Party, known locally as the machine, with a ruthless efficiency. It was the machine that John F. Kennedy's father, Joseph Kennedy, appealed to to get his son over the line in the 1960 Democratic primary. The boss of machine was a rotund, jovial man named Richard, Richard J. Darley, who was the mayor of Chicago from 1955 until his death in 1976. In fact, the main mayor Darley was plastered over everything in the city so much that I thought the mayor was his first name. In 1919, he had belonged to an Irish gang which helped to, uh, to, propag to propagate a notorious uh, race riot in Chicago and was blamed for the attacks on people of colour. When I discovered this, I wrote my first play, a story about that riot. The American uh, Irish and my people uh, at the working class level were always at odds. In some places they still are. We compete for the same menial jobs and housing and respect, but they love you if they love you, and they hate you if they hate you. Both emotions are epic and true. Later, after I had grown up and moved to New York, I discovered the power of the Irish community there too. Whenever a cop dies or is killed in the line of duty, especially that, the pipes played at the funeral are Irish. Uh, President Ronald Reagan and the Senate majority leader there, the Democrat Tip O'Neill, found common ground because of their Irish roots. A great number of supporters of Trump have Irish ancestry, a legacy that some now quite wrongly are calling the equivalent uh, to the slavery of um, uh, African Americans. Much of making America great has to do with the concept of an America 
that many Irish believed they came to to uh, to the offer the coffee uh, the coffin shops that brought them from Ireland after the great potato famine of the 1840s. You get no way in America if you do not understand that Ireland is in the is in the wrap and is in the is in the warp and reef of the Republic. It is the other story. Uh, from from that of the pilgrim from the pilgrim fathers, and what this means is that if Ireland is seen to be disrespected by the UK over Brexit, all bets are off. Ireland is such a powerful entity in the US that so uh, and so per per uh, per pervasive that when I came to the UK, I was shocked to see how little respect the Irish had here. A guy I met in London. In, uh, in what he called the uh, country Kilburn, once told me that he had known that he was uh, the, they had not known that he was black until he opened his mouth in London. This was the mid nineteen uh, eighties, and the troubles were at their height. And I detected an undercurrent even among the most enlightened against the Irish. The frankly cavalier treatment of the Irish backstop by the Brexiteers is a dangerous thing to an American. Last week, I listened to the former Brexit secretary, Dominic Rabb, uh, say that he had not read the entirety of the Good Friday Agreement, a 35-page document that should have been a doddle for a former solicitor. Rabb made the admission uh, to the Commons a Northern Ireland Select Committee when he was asked repeatedly by its chairman, Linda Savile, uh, to confirm whether he had read the agreement before or during Brexit talks. He had not. Without any apparent awareness of how strong he, uh, sh how shocking he sounded, but if the UK wants to secure a trade deal with the US, it had better clean up its stance towards, the, towards Ireland and quickly. The Irish lobby is a st in the US is a strong and formidable and passionate. They will not let uh, imagined slight sli slide. The flip side is that something that the UK does not really seem to realise, in spite of America's excitement over the royal family and all things to do with the House of Windsor, this country is not deep down really trusted. Rather I should say that the English are not trusted, or to be uh, precise, the English upper class. Unfortunately, Americans throw everyone under the bus uh, labelled Perfidious Albion, and this is because of Ireland, to whom Albion was, not so long ago, indeed uh, perfidious. When the, late, uh, when the late Princess of Wales visited Chicago just after her divorce, she whined and dined and uh, she whined and dined and there are pictures of her being swirled around the dance floor in cocktail dresses giggling at all the attention and obvious awe. Chicago had a real princess among them. But there was one journalist, the great Michael Rourke, who was outraged. It has been reported in his newspaper that the city of Chicago had gone gaga over the visit of Princess Diana, he ranted, railing against how sycophantic the city had just become because a royal was in their midst, whereas Chicago, where was Chicago's self-respect? And it was no accident that the Romans and the other baddies, in what the French call Pullums uh, movies, uh, describe ancient Rome and Greece. They have cut glass, English accents, Downton Abbey, the Crown and Victoria, are all very well, but if the Irish are seen to be uh, to be uh, if the Irish are seen to be being giving the shaft during Brexit, those uh, pails may be metaphorically uh, rattling at a cocktail fundraisers again. And not only for uh, Noradi, which helped the IRA, uh, but for a campaign to reject anything that the UK may want, including a trade agreement. There is something profoundly stupid about the way Brexit is proceeding in relation to Ireland. Britain's finest uh, hour, m uh, maternally, uh, will come up against something which is much stronger in the USA. When it comes to the UK, which is uh, generally referred to as England, deep down inside, just about everyone in America is Irish. In short, don't be perceived to be disrespecting Ireland. Remember, I told you this. And that's quite a, 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 a you know a profound warning, and I think generally we forget in America that there are 
these lobbies that do exist, the Israeli lobby, and as you've seen there, um, there is a very strong Irish lobby in America uh, that will, if again, if we are seen to be giving Ireland the shaft in the Brexit talks, then you may have a, a, a bizarre opportunity where America will side with Ireland. And all this attention that America gave to the UK because it was in the European Union and all the investment opportunity that it got because of that from America might suddenly go to Ireland as punishment. And once again, the UK gets the shaft because idiot Brexiteers didn't even consider the Good Friday Agreement. When this was brought up, and it was brought up, um, the Brexiteers just dismissed it and said, oh, it won't be a problem. <laughs> you know? Ironically, the, the thing that they said will not be the problem is the biggest problem <laughs> in Brexit. And it's like, so much so that you have Theresa May and other Brexiteers thinking of fantasy technologies. But there you go.